Greetings, welcome back to the Sacredly Sovereign vlog, where we research and discuss Aboriginal law, history, and culture. My name is Mariah L. And the, the video that I'm coming to you guys with today is very closely tied to a recent experience that I had. Um, I host a monthly womb circle or sister circle. And one of my sisters reached out to me and she basically told me, you know, hey, Sorry about that, guys. Somebody ringing my buzzer again. Oh my God. Sorry about that, guys. So this sister, she reached out to me and she basically told me, she said, Mariah, I am um, I'm about to give birth. Uh, the doula that I have been working with has recently informed me that because of her contract, she is required to report my infant's birth to vital statistics to obtain a social security number and a birth certificate. Okay. Um, she asked me, do you know any doulas that um, are perhaps more in align with our values that, you know, does not feel the need to do this? Um, and, you know, she had every right to feel that way and to inquire about alternative um, services um, because this doula was, was trying to make her feel as though this was something that she had to do. Okay. This whole um, practice of uh, uh, obtaining a social security number and birth certificate at the time of birth is a practice that is a direct echo from what we call Justinian deception, okay? So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have more information um, in your arsenal to be able to make the, the decision that's right for you and, and your baby, okay? So I wanna talk about you know where this all began because you know, this was not uh, one of our ancestral practices of social security numbers and things of that sort. So it had to begin somewhere, right? And from the research that I've been doing, it began around, you know, 530 to 560 AD, around that time period, through an emperor named Justinian, okay? And that's why we, that's where we get the name Justinian Deception. So this emperor named Justinian, he came up with something called corpus juris, all right? And corpus juris is really evil, all right? Corpus juris basically means the jurisdiction of the dead, okay? So jurisdiction of the dead, this means in order to bring a living person to the points of no rights, Okay, no legal rights. He must be legally sacrificed at the time of birth. Okay, and this is a process um, that we refer to as being birthed into legal death, okay, or paper genocide. All right, so being birthed into legal death. You know, what, what, what could be the reason for this? You know, what could be the reason for such a sadistic act against infants, right? This is done in order to forego justice, all right? Taking you outside of the protection of common law, okay? The law that people, that one derives from the public, you know, we the people, taking you out of protection of that so that they can uh, perpetuate their genocide without any sort of legal ramifications, all right? That is the whole point of this, okay? Justinian deception is a system that removes the public from public domain, all right? And it puts them into private contracts with Rome, or in this, in this case, the US, right? So you ever hear about like, you ever see those videos like, oh, Oh, babies born today are born X amount of dollars in debt. You know, all of this is tied to that uh, initial social security number and birth certificate, okay, that allows them to be able to do deceptive things like this, okay? So we're going to take it a step further, right? Because this is actually, you know, something that is really deep that affects, you know, it's, it's a very multi layered issue, okay? So the reason why you know they they want to keep you know your child from birth in a court in a you know a, a legal death type of status is because a dead man has no rights 
again, they are attached, a dead man has no rights. So they are attached to a living person. They, they, I'm sorry, they attach a living person to a dead entity, all right? And so a dead entity, the way that you can um, decipher be between the dead entity, which we, re we refer to as the straw man and yourself, your true and living being, is how they write the name. Okay, the signature, how they, how you sign your nature, right? If you are receiving any type of, um, you know, uh, legal type of documentation that has to do with your identity, social security number, birth certificate, things of that sort, you'll see that they're gonna have your name in all capital letters, okay? When you see your name in all capital letters, this is uh, alluding to the straw man, okay? That's not alluding to the true and living person. When we're talking about a true and living person, you're gonna see the name written in a grammatically correct fashion, all right? Let's go back, take it right back, right back to elementary school when they teach you how to write your name, right? They're teaching you that the first letter of the name should be capitalized. And the remaining letters should be in lowercase, right? That's the correct way to, to write a name. Do you know in school now they're teaching children to write their names in all caps? That's really crazy. That ties into just uh, the further programming of you claiming this, this entity, this dead entity as yourself, okay? So to take this a step further, you know, we, we know that this is, um, you know, the, the coded lingo that they're using, um, you know, when they are talking about, you know, jurisdiction of the dead. What are they, what does it mean when we're summoning something? You know, we're summoning spirits, we're summoning entities, we're summoning things that are not living in a sense, right? And what is the piece of paper that they send you from the courts telling you to come to court? It's a summons with your name in all caps, right? So this just further, um, this just further proves uh, this process and, you know, this program basically that they're working from, all right? And so, you know, um, it's, it's really important as women, as mothers bringing babies into this world that we know that we have options because once we become privy to Justinian deception, this forces us to, you know, to um, approach motherhood, approach being a responsible mother from a whole different, you know, a whole different paradigm, okay? To be a responsible mother, respond able, okay? Are you going to be able to respond when these people are telling you that you have to put your baby into Justinian deception, you got to get a birth certificate, you got to get a social security number, all of these things, right? This is really important for women to get, even more so than men, because at the end of the day, you know, women bring babies into the world. So we have to, you know, really consider being responsible. We have to consider you know, um, the practices that we want to take with us into the Aquarian age and the practices that, you know, we need to abandon in the age of Pisces, all right? Because there's nothing spiritual about birthing your baby into legal death, all right? There's nothing spiritual about that. And we might think that, oh, like, well, what else is there? Like, but there are people in this world that don't practice this, you know? There are a lot of countries where you have a baby and your baby doesn't get a, a social security number and a birth certificate right off the bat like that, you know? Some people, they don't even name their babies right away, you know? Sometimes they gotta wait a little bit because that's their culture, you know? And so uh, when that child grows up and they decide that they want to participate in the system, and then they go ahead and get their, you know, social security number and all of those things um, when they decide that's something that they want to do. You know, if they feel like they want to consent to entering into that contract, then that's their choice to consent to doing that. But babies, <laughs> infants, 
could not consent to be part of contracts. So the whole thing is extremely fraudulent. And again, as mothers, we need to claim our thrones and we need to protect our babies from being born into legal death moving forward into the Aquarian age. Um, thank you guys so much for, you know, uh, watching this video, tuning in. I want to share my screen really quickly. I want to just um, share a little bit of research that I came across about, you know, this process of creating corpus juris, okay? Because I was like, am I able to find a little bit of um, information online about this. So I want to share with you guys um, really quickly what I did find about this particular um, topic. So at first I went into Google and I just Googled uh, Justinian deception and um, I found some information on Britannica. And, and so what they have here basically talks about it right here, you know, uh, Justinian the first noted for his administrative reorganization of the imperial government and for his sponsorship of a codification of laws known as the Code of Justinian. So I want to click on Code of Justinian. So it's just it's just so crazy like why do you need a codification of laws like why do laws need to be codified shouldn't they be clear so people can know what they are to be able to consent to them obviously not if it's fraudulent right let's click on code of justinian so and here it is right here code of justinian latin codus justinius formally corpus juris civilis, body of civil law, collections of laws and legal interpretations developed under the sponsorship of Byzantine Empire Just, Justinian I from 529 to 565. <clears throat> Strictly speaking, the works did not constitute a new legal code. Rather, Justinian's committees of jurists provided basically two reference works containing collections of past laws and extracts of the opinions of the great Roman jurists. Also included were an elementary outline of laws and a collection of Justinian's own new laws, all right? So they tell us right there, this was just, a, this was basically some stuff he made up. This was his own views, his own laws. This was not, okay, the Justinian code consists of four books and these are the Latin names for those books. And there was something else that I wanted to share here. Let me find it. Okay, so uh, the work on the Codex Constitutionum began soon after Justinian's ascension um, when he appointed a 10-man commission to go through all the known ordinances or constitutions issued by the emperors, weed out the contradictory or obsolete material, and, at, and adapt all provisions to the circumstances of that time. So right there, they tell you that they went through all of the previous documentation, constitutions, books, whatever you call them, and they chose what they liked. <laughs> they chose what supported, you know, their agenda. They support. They 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 chose what supported the circumstances of that time, their agenda of that time, to bring people under the jurisdiction of the dead. Okay. They chose the parts that would allow them to legally sacrifice children at birth. All right. The revisions were based partly on Justinian's own new legislation. Where's the other part that I wanted to share with you guys? The digesta was drawn up uh, between 530 and 533 by a commission of 16 lawyers under the presidency of Juris Tribonian. They collected and examined all the known writings of all of the authorized jurists, extracted from them whatever was deemed valuable, <laughs> generally selecting only one extract or any given legal point and rephrase the originals whenever necessary for clarity and conciseness. 
again, rewriting history to fit the narrative that they were trying to push. The results were published in 50 books, each book subdivided into titles. <clears throat> All jurisdictional statements not selected for the digesta were declared invalid and were thenceforth never to be cited in law. All right, they were declared invalid and thenceforth never to be cited in law, not because they weren't right, <laughs> not because they weren't lawful, because they didn't fit the, um, the, the, the illusion that was being created. All right, we have to remember this. We have to always remember this. Everything legal is not lawful. The Institutionis, I don't know how you pronounce that, compiled and published in 533 under Tribonian supervision and relying on such earlier texts as those of Gaius was an elementary textbook or outline of legal institutions for the year of for the use of first year law students so not only did they uh, you know round up a bunch of these texts and basically took what they wanted and rewrote history. They took this, <laughs> this, uh, this new book um, and they used this, you know, fraudulent propaganda as the authority to educate people <laughs> by. So you see that there was many layers to this. There was many angles to go about implementing this, this concept, all right? So the, the novels comprised several collections of new ordinances issued by Justinian himself between 534 and 565 after publication of the revised codex. Latin was the language of all the works except the novels, which were, all, which were almost all published in Greek. Though official Latin translations existed for the, for the Western Roman provinces. So I'm gonna stop, I think that was the end of it. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Stop share. So you'll see there, you know, there was a whole process around coming up with Justinian deception. There was a whole process around how, you know, um, how it would be implemented. And there was a whole process around how it would be maintained, you know? And part of, you know, maintaining this deception is making us believe that it's something that we have to participate in, okay? And we need to um, realize within ourselves that we always have a choice. And we need to be mindful about consenting to participate in these rituals. Okay, because that's what it is. These energy harvestings, we, you are consenting to participate in it by continuing these practices, all right? Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Please check back next week. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what the topic for next week is gonna be, but it's definitely going to be something um, informative, uh, in depth and truly from the heart, truly from the soul. Uh, I appreciate all of y'all so much. More love.